All right, uh, Trix, how are you doing? I am doing fantastic. I have a big one, and Marnie knows that this is a very big one. Okay. Um, it's so I've been doing like a lot of research on, you know, the prisons, and you know how Savannah said that this world is a prison, and then how you have the jailer alluding to the idea of, uh, you know, a cosmos divided. You have all the Zareth realms. So yep. what if the Titans and the first ones were kind of in a loop where I was reading, there's an old short story, uh, the eyes of the earth mother, where you have Azeroth, where she's kind of in a battle with the old ones. We don't really know who the old ones are. Yep. I don't really think they're void Lords. I think they're more primordial than that. Okay. Uh, so what if, you know, she's in this an eternal conflict with the old ones. Then you have the the uh, first ones, they see this eternal conflict, and they're like, okay, maybe we need to make a cosmological prison. You know, mm -hmm. so you have all the cosmological forces divided, and they all kind of feed off of Azeroth, and Azeroth is kind of powering this prison, so she can never escape, an old, so that the old ones never escape. Yeah. And then you have the come and they put their facilities all over Azeroth creating like a planetary prison okay. what do you think yeah I like it because it effectively it sparks a number of of interesting sort of pathways from which you can venture because mm -hmm. on the one hand old ones old gods sound almost too perfect right it sounds like it mm -hmm. just fits Old gods, on the other hand, we know are actually servants of the Void Lords. Right. At least that's according to the Titans. And there are some pieces of evidence that the old gods themselves consider themselves part of the Void. The problem that I have with the initial explanation of the Void is it does not seem to make sense. And also, as I've explained many times before, the Void does not seem to fit the mold of the cosmological forces. Because in the mm -hmm. cosmological map, if you look at the cosmological forces, everything has its direct opposite, except for Void, which its only actual opposite would be reality, not light. But of mm -hmm. course, if you look at the cosmological map, it says Void, Shadow, right? and then Old Gods. So it kind of makes the Void part of Shadow, part of the Old Gods. It's all just one thing. But in reality... Void and shadow isn't the same thing. Shadow is the existence. Uh, shadow is the absence of light. But it is not void. Right? It's not as if shadow has nothing. You can have things that is in shadow, right? but it's not void. Void, on the other hand, the only opposite that it truly has is the opposite of reality. Because reality would be the existence of something. Void would be the existence of nothing. Therefore, those two are the opposites. So I would say if we were to go with your theory and we take your theory and say, right, what if your theory was canonical? Then I would say it looks something like this. In the beginning, we have two forces. One force becomes the cosmological forces and becomes the, the whole cosmology thing that we have right now, the prison that you refer to. But mm -hmm. what if reality was already there? So in other words, Azeroth existed since the beginning and Azeroth has been in a battle since the beginning with the other so you have these two forces one is reality one is void one is in other words the non-existence of reality and this is the eternal struggle because what's interesting zalatath also refers to it as the eternal conflict she asks uh you the player to ask the draenei if the light has ever told them about the eternal conflict the eternal cycle Right? And that the Draenei was not the first. Um, you know, so effectively, it may actually be that the original war was between reality and non-reality or nothing, which we would prefer anti -creation. to. Anti-creation. Yeah, anti-creation is a good word for it. And and as a result of this creation and anti-creation, you effectively had creation 
span a, a sort of pocket reality in which non-creation is left out of the equation. It, it can't really interfere with the actual creation. And then creation built all of these soldiers or first ones in order to safeguard the creation that, that it spawned. And in its, you know, in its attempt to do so, it then spawned Titans and Eternal Ones and everything else as a manner of, or as a, as a, uh, uh, an attempt to ensure that if the void or if this non-anti-creation was to ever show up, then, you know, there would be soldiers to fight against it. And this might actually show then why Sargeras was so afraid. Because I've always had this problem. We are told by Steve Denuser that the cosmological forces, like, none of them are stronger than the others. You'll get times where the Void gets a little bit stronger than any of the others, or times where Death might get a little bit stronger than any of the others. But they are effectively equal in power. So why would Sargeras be so afraid of the Void, which is just another faction in the cosmological game? Why would Sargeras be so afraid of this game that he decides to destroy everything to ensure that this one player in the game doesn't win everything. I mean, it maybe makes no that, sense, right? Maybe it's because if you think about Void, they're one of the only cosmological forces that can corrupt almost everything. Like, death might be the most resistant to the Void, but... Mm -hmm. If we saw anything of the Drust in Ardenweald, how they're kind of, they have Void-esque powers and stuff. They had, like, the Void portals and stuff in, in there. Um, the Void is the only force that can corrupt everything. Okay. And it could make sense that if the Void can corrupt everything, then what stops them from being able to corrupt Azeroth? Reality. So, yeah. well, it could be a thing. Here's an interesting thing. In Bastion, when you ask the Kyrian about the light and the void, the Kyrian says the light and the void are trivial forces. Hmm. But what if they're talking about the light and the void as we know them? In other words, the light, one of the cosmological powers, the void, one of the cosmological powers. But what if the old gods their masters aren't the void as we know them so they so kind are kind of like this, the past tense well not necessarily the past tense but they are they are this other force this force this anti-creation force right that wants to destroy everything and this is actually what scared sargeras into wanting to destroy all life because it doesn't matter if Shadow... Because uh, another thing, they do say Light and Void uh, are trivial forces, but if we look at the Broker's map, they don't actually refer to the Void as the Void. They refer to the Void as Shadow. Right? They just call it Light and Shadow. Those are the two forces that the, the Broker's map in the Grimmer of the Shadowlands have as the two opposite forces of each other. So they don't actually call it the Void. So what if the Void is the one that doesn't fit? That could be very plausible. Because, you know, it's kind of like, you know, we know the old gods come from the Void Lords. Um, but we've never seen a Void Lord. And we can only assume they're, you know, I, they're either super powerful or they have a facade where you want to think they're super powerful so they still have like a level of dominance. Yeah. Um, what bothers me again about this is would they really be this scared of just another cosmological force? Because it is just another cosmological force. And what's interesting, it's not just Sargeras that was afraid of this force. It was Zuval as well. Right. So, so this is the thing that I think that, that should scare everyone. 
is that the, whatever this force is that both Zuval and Zargeris was afraid of managed to scare the living shit out of the two bravest of their kind. Zuval was considered to be the Arbiter, the most wise of all of the Eternal Ones. That's why he was the Arbiter. And yet, whatever this force was scared him so much that he turned against everything he believed in and realized that the only way to stop this is the complete and utter domination of the universe. Sargeras sees this force, her hears what this force is, and decides to kill everything. And if we are to say Sargeras and Zuval work together, then now that makes sense. Because Zuval have, has been planning this whole corruption of the Shadowlands and all the souls flowing towards him for a very long time. And the idea, effectively, probably... Because it's interesting that Argus, as well, um, the creation of Argus seems to have been fundamentally to ensure that the the fake Arbiter would be unmade. Right? Which, which you have to... Argus, the unmaker, the Arbiter is unmade as a result of Argus which threatens the entire balance of the of the Shadowlands. So Argus, made specifically for that purpose by Sargeras, does the job that Sargeras wanted him to do. Sargeras obviously didn't plan on being imprisoned again, because now that the Arbiter is down, Sargeras can finally bring an end to all reality. He can finally kill everything, feed all of those souls into... Zuval, so that Zuval can ultimately set off and and dis dominate the universe. And this domination is then meant to stand against whatever big bad they both see. But I struggle to see how that big bad can be just another one of the cosmological forces, when all of the cosmological forces were built to be in absolute balance with each other. You see, that's the no. point here. The first ones built the the first ones built the cosmological forces to keep all other forces at bay. So their job is to keep each other in balance. But what if it looked something like this? So let me just quickly Google this, because this might be easier for me to explain. Cosmology map. Uh, we, we just do this quickly. So if we go up an image in a new tab, and if we zoom in, right? So what if... The explanation we see here, so we see shadow on the outskirts, right? Then we see shadow in brackets void. Then we see the void lords. And then finally we see the old gods, right? That's the, that, that's the sort of collection that we see in this, on this side of the map. What if one of these things or two of these things do not belong here. In other words, what if the void or the shadow in brackets void do not belong here? What if that is the other force? Because that would make sense why Sargeras and them would become so deathly afraid of what this cosmological force is capable of. Because the original forces of shadow have been turned into void. They've been completely uh, destroyed by the Void Lords, and now the Void Lords are threatening to destroy the whole universe, or the whole great so like a cosmo So like a cosmological force taking over a cosmological force. Like an out external force, you know, external like parasitic force yeah. taking over, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so if you, if you look at the original forces which they say is two, according to the brokers, at least, the language of the first ones, it says that there were two forces originally. One of the forces ultimately became the whole cosmological idea, right, that we see here. The other force, they say, there's no mention of that force. They don't know what happened to it. They call it the one on the outside. 
But what if the one on the outside is no longer on the outside? So the one on the outside found a way into the shadow realm, turned the shadow realm into the void realm, which this being is, and this is why Sargeras and Zuval is so deathly afraid now. Because while Shadow was just as strong as order and death and disorder and light and life, Void is much stronger than any of the other cosmological forces because effectively Void isn't a cosmological force. It is one of the original forces. And that could explain why Azeroth decided to go to war to, you know, basically declare war on Void ages in the past. Yeah, I mean, that would be, that would be a very good explanation for it. Why they, and why the Tauren call it the eternal battle between the Earth Mother and the Old Ones. Because it really is. Azeroth has been fighting the Old Ones, in other words, the Old Gods, uh, for eternity. And even though this was a good plan, Azeroth's plan was good, I will spawn my own soldiers, she did not plan on her, her immortal enemy finding its way into this galaxy and into this existence. This that, could also support... Yeah? I do have like a little bit of a part two... This could also support my idea of how you have all the Zareth realms, the first ones, they see this eternal war. You know, maybe she even created the first ones, for all we know. But yeah. you, you have this eternal war, they create all the Zareth realms, mm -hmm. the Zareth realms are like the last line of defense. If all the Zareth realms fall, it's like the, it's the, uh, it's literally like the whisper from Corthia. The Fulcrum Wavers all will be undone. If all the Zareth realms fall, the Void will have free realm of all the cosmological forces. Oh, yeah. Like a giant force field. You know, like those, the, uh, the fruit cutter, you know, mm -hmm. the apple core slicer things? It's like yeah. one of those. Each little wall is a Zareth gate. And then you have the big circle in the center, which is for the core, where Azeroth is. Okay. I see what you uh, so, I see what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So if all the Zareth realms fall, the void gets free entry to everything, and they can devour reality. You know, and that could also be why the Titans and the first ones they really want to prolong this eternal war as much as possible because if she awakens, it's going to be you know fifth world war <laughs> yeah, yeah so it's, it's probably i mean it's one of two things right it's either the prolonging thereof or genuinely the titans are trying to keep azeroth as safe as possible so mm -hmm. maybe we've read the forges wrong this whole time maybe the forges isn't the prison maybe the force uh, the the forges on azeroth serves more as seals Seals to right. ensure that she doesn't fall to the corruption of her eternal enemy, the old ones. Mm -hmm. um, that could be that could be another uh, uh, interpretation of it. But I do like the Zerath realm uh, idea that they serve sort of as uh, the the chain around this entire system, and if you remove this chain. Uh, big problems, right? Like big, big problems. Because once that chain is removed, there's nothing stopping the enemy of all from getting through. Right. Because if you think about it, what happens if Zareth Umbra stops working? You know, you have the jailer. He was able to infiltrate. You know, Zareth Mortis uh -huh. is could it hypothetically be possible for a Void Lord to find a way into Zareth Umbra and mess with that chain, you know? Yeah, I mean, it should... It should technically be possible um, to get into any of the Zareth realms if you are strong enough and to ultimately enact control over the universe because the Zareth realms do seem to be connected to everything. 
from Zerath Mortis, uh, from Zerath Mortis, uh, Zuval was capable of summoning Azeroth to it, or it to Azeroth. Because if you don't remember, Zuval was literally doing damage to Azeroth whilst being in Zerath Mortis, which has never quite make sense, made sense to me, because technically speaking, Azeroth is reality. Azeroth is very far away from Zerath Mortis. Zerath Mortis is in the in-between. It's, it's part of the Shadowlands. It's on the other side of the veil. So it might be that all of these Zerath realms are intricately connected to everything else. And from a singular Zerath realm, you could undo the whole universe. It's just, you know, I keep coming back to Zuval didn't want to destroy the universe. He wanted to dominate the universe. And we learn once he dies that it wasn't just domination for domination's sake either. Zuval was very clear. A cosmos divided will not survive what is to come. And that should, again, scare people. Because when the cosmological forces, which according to Steve Denuser, and this is literally almost verbatim what Steve Denuser said, he said these six forces operate in, um, like, they, they operate on their own, but at times they will band together if one of the forces become a little bit too powerful. So if you have one of the forces that's sort of stepping out of line and, you know, sort of starting to do things that, they, that it shouldn't do, uh, they will band together to take them down. Only we now have Sargeras and Zuval that doesn't go to the other forces and be like, hey fam, we need help. Uh, the void is getting a little strong. They're going, even if all of the other forces banded together, we couldn't stop this enemy that is about to come. Which suggests to me that whatever enemy it is, isn't part of the original cycle. It's an enemy that is far more powerful than those that were part of the original cycle. If, if you know, if that makes any sense. Yeah. There's another thing I'm that just... I, just while we were talking here, that I sort of noticed, mm -hmm. and I remember we talked about this for a long time when this map first came out, but the seals in the corners of the map. And then, of course, you have two seals that seem to either be broken or completely incomplete uh, on the sides here of that map. And I can't help but think... Five lanterns now darken. The flame they seek will light the master's way. What if it's one, two, three, four, five? But there's six of them. You have the four in the corners and two on the sides. It never said that there was only five true it only said that there's five that is now darkened in other words it could have started off as six seals two of them were broken long ago right or maybe there were seven seals because remember they do say that one force became two then three then six and ultimately seven Although the seventh may be a fractal of the six. We always just assumed that they were talking about the cosmological forces. But what if that line refers not to the cosmological forces, but to the seals that is meant to safeguard, in, in your analogy, what if this is the Zerath realms? What if these seals is the Zerath realms? That could kind of make sense because the Z it was never really established if the Zerath realms are exactly inside the cosmological force or if they kind of exist in their own pocket dimension yeah. outside of the cosmological force, which I'm going to go with that second one because it just sounds a little bit more accurate. Yeah. Because Zerath Mortis, the jailer literally had to just, you know, wave his chains out into the, you know, whatever. 
until he latched on to something. Yeah. So. He had to pull it from the in-between. The in-between right. sounds to me like whatever isn't part of these cosmological forces. But what may, what should scare the living fuck out of you then is that two of the Xerath realms seems to be completely offline. Which could be death and who knows what else. No, Maybe death, Void is offline. We know that Death's Xerath realm works at Xerath Mortis. But what True. if it's Void and Disorder? Because Disorder, we've seen so much of the foul, but there's a very good chance that they don't have a quote-unquote pantheon. Because why would the pantheon of Disorder allow Sargeras, a titan of order, to take control of their armies? which is the Burning Legion. They obviously wouldn't. They would have interfered. They would have been like, what the fuck are you doing? Unless these two broken Xerath realms are the void Xerath realm, which have been corrupted by, or the shadow Xerath realm, I should say, that's been corrupted by void and the Xerath realm has been destroyed, i.e. there are no eternal ones of shadow anymore. They were killed by the Void long ago. And then you have the Xerath Realm of Disorder that's been destroyed. And their their destruction also led to the end of their Pantheon. Because without the Xerath Realm, the Pantheon cannot exist. Because the Pantheon cannot come back without the Xerath Realm. And that could be another explanation for uh, the five lanterns now darkened. The flame they seek will light the Master's way. In other words, you have four Xerath realms left, a fifth one if you include Azeroth as a Xerath realm, which I am inclined to do, considering Azeroth has this ability to create life within her dream. Which is what Xerath realms do. I was also thinking, like, what if there's a Xerath Veritas? Xerath of reality, essentially. Yeah. You know, it would make sense for her to have her own kind of, or even, you know, an extension of herself, you know, the only things that, you know, her and the first ones could do, you know, um, but that de you definitely bring up like a really good point on the idea of Zareth Umbra being broken because Umbra doesn't inherently mean void. It could also mean shadow, darkness, etc. Yeah. Which darkness and shadow basically, you know, the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and void. Yeah. No. The more you, the more we talk, the more I'm starting to think that the void is like just a parasitic force at this point. Definitely like an alien force. I'm trying to see. Oh, here we go. Um, Bolivia sent this to me. Uh, Savin, can you send that DM again? Just because I'm going to struggle to fucking find it now. Please. Um, well, I do want to mention there's also the other thing in Corthia. The Whisper, the seventh covets what the six hold fast. I think the seventh being Azeroth, she has the combined, you know, since she is reality, you know, she has the combined powers of shadow, life, death, disorder, etc. And she's using all of that to combat Void. I don't think she would inherently have the power over Void, but let's say Void corrupts her. Could she then reverse that corruption and still have the powers of Void? Is that, you know, a possibility? Mm. Possible, yes. Because, like, there's a quote, you know, just in general, where... You let the enemy in, steal their technology and or weapons or whatever, and then mm -hmm. eventually use it against them. So what if the only way to defeat Void is with Void? But now what that's But now what gets more interesting is it says the seventh covets what the six hold fast. So what if the seventh is actually the force on the outside? Because the broker seems to think that the seventh force is a fractal of the six, 
which we've always assumed is Azeroth. But what if the seventh force isn't a fractal of the six? What if the seventh force that the brokers seem to... Because remember, the brokers couldn't understand the language of the first ones. They tried their best to decipher the language of the first ones, which means they could get a lot of things wrong. So they see six true. forces originally form, right? That would be the six cosmological forces. And then suddenly they see mention of what consists of a seventh force. And there's so little information on the seventh force that they kind of go, well, that, that must just be a fractal then of the six. That's the only thing that makes sense. But if we, if we hold fast to our previous theory, then the seventh force is this one. The Void Lords and the Old Gods, they are the seventh force that the Brokers couldn't place because they don't belong within the system. The seventh that force covets what the six hold fast. What does the six hold fast? The Great Beyond, the Cycle. Right? They all operate within the cycle and the cycle has to be protected at all costs. But the, the seventh force covets it. Covets means I want it, right? I want what they hold fast. In other words, and covets is almost like an extreme version of want, which means that, that actually, to me, makes a lot of sense. Maybe you don't agree? I, oh, I definitely agree. I Now that I'm thinking a, a, about it, you know, how Azeroth, we've always thought of you know these six you have the six forces that surround azeroth and then yeah. and then you have azeroth what if they're all just one in the same you know azeroth isn't her own individual force she's this all of the six at the exact same time you know yeah, yeah, yeah you have the six individuals and then you have her but she's also the six individuals so and then you have the void which is, just comes out from the outside which yeah. would make sense if we're talking about, I think, like, the League of Legends, their lore universe, you have the Watchers mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. TLDR is reality. You know, you had all the the Void Beings, essentially, in the League universe, and then reality just came into existence, yeah. pushing them aside. So, what if that's the kind of the case with... You know, wow, you have reality, you have the cosmological forces, and you have all of this void just being pushed away, you know, and the void is like, hey, man, you guys just like took up our space, you know, and they're like, and then they also realize, holy shit, a force that can do that. Yeah. You know, we want that. So, you so, know, it's, yeah. From what? I understand here. So, uh, what Oblivious linked here is the names of the. Is this the Mortises? What do you mean, Oblivious? What What's this collection of names here? Because you're. Because it's called the Zerith Realms, but you're saying that the Mortises Realm. So this is all the words, the same words for the Mortis realm. Wait, me? What? Uh, I'll, I'll show you. I can't remember. I saw this, but I can't remember where I saw this from. Names all the Xeraths. Oh, okay, so this is all the Xerath realm. So you have the Titanic Xerath realm, which is called Midner. You have the Draconic Xerath realm, which is called Rethel. You have the demonic one, which is called Kashu Kasharu, and you have the Sath the Shathfjar, which is the Ankyo. Um the yeah, this is the so this is the Mortis realms. Um or at least the ones that she could she could choke out. Uh would be the realms that we know of now. Draconic Mortis Realm though, or oh, Xerath Realm though. Why would there be a draconic Xerath realm? I think she's speaking in the tongue, not necessarily the 
name of no, the No, no, obviously she would be speaking in the tongue. But why would draconic dr dragon language, why would it be relevant? Because from my, what I'm looking at here, so Titanic calls it Midnir. Unless, of course, this is their word for zero. Right? In other words, this would be their word for Xerath, and then whatever comes after Xerath. So Xerath Mortis in Titanic would be Midnir something. Right? Because their word for Xerath is, is Midnir. Um, but that's not how I sort of read this. I, I more read it as she is saying the the word for the place where that place is or who that place is connected to, if that makes sense. So the way I read it is for the Titans, their Xerath realm in their language is called Midnir. But even if we took it on what you guys are saying it is, Draconic still doesn't make sense. Why would Draconic be important? The others make sense. Demonic, that makes sense. It's a cosmological force. Shathyar, uh, that's uh, very close to Old God, which still makes sense, right? It, it should be there. It's part of the the, the, the the cosmological forces. Draconic isn't part of the, the cosmological forces. Why would it be a language that matters? All I'll say is one last thing. I think Draconic could be still be part of a cosmological force. You think about Azeroth, she kind of helped create the dragons and stuff. So they're like the primordial beings of Azeroth. You have all the elements and stuff. So if Azeroth has her own Xerath realm, maybe the dragons could be linked to it. That's all I could think of. Or as someone in chat literally just said, here, she might be listing all the the languages that we know. In other words, you know, she's just mouthing off in languages that we would actually understand. Um, which is that also could be possible. possible, right? Uh, that's the that's the beauty of speculation is <laughs> you find little tidbits of things that make no sense. But it could make sense, right? Or you could at least make it make sense um, to some extent. So, yeah, uh, I, I love the question, by the way. It, it spawned, what, 37 minutes of uh, <laughs> discussion. So anything at this point is possible. The The truth is, I think the next, the next patch is going to reveal a lot more about this story. If I'm, if, if, like, I'm going to bait my life on this. The next patch is going to reveal a lot about the old gods. It's somewhere underground. We've been warned that whatever is there must never be found. Um, whatever experiments Deathwing did, because remember at this point, Deathwing would not have been corrupted by the old gods, but he would have certainly been hearing their voices already. So he would have already started doing things that might be a little bit frowned upon. And where there's Deathwing, there's old gods. And when there's old gods, I get happy. Because <laughs> the old gods are by far my favorite cosmological force in the universe. Because they make the least sense, you know. All the others sort of very straightforward, this is what they want to do, except for the old gods, which they don't seem to be that straightforward. Not only that... If we are to say that all of these cosmological forces were built to keep each other in, in, in order, the Void seems to be the only one that, that have broken its original purpose, right? Because life doesn't attack Azeroth. Disorder only really started attacking under Sargeras. Right? Prior to Sargeras, the Vo the Burning Legion would simply reign chaos as they do. And chaos isn't bad because chaos just creates a new life in a way. You know, so the demons would arrive on a planet, destroy everything on that planet, and then new life would spawn. The demons wouldn't destroy the titan of the planet. They would just destroy the life on the planet, thereby making place for new life to spawn. Basically like a 
a, a, a field fire, right? Like a forest fire. Uh, that's basically all they did. Death is within the, the, the Shadowlands. They do their job. The Light and the Naru don't really seem hell-bent on destroying anything, but they do seem to be building an army for something. And then you have the Void, which send their own beings into the Great Beyond, not to keep some form of balance, but to corrupt a Titan in order to bring about the end of all things. So even there, the Void sticks out like a sore thumb. One of these six do not belong, and it seems to always come back to the Void. They don't seem to play by the rules of what the cosmological forces were built to do. Remember, all six of these cosmological forces were built by the first ones. Why would the first ones, with the sole purpose of defending and keeping the universe safe, build a cosmological force that wants nothing more than to destroy the universe that it was meant to keep safe? You see where I'm getting at? The void sticks yeah. out. The void makes no sense. So either the original story of the first ones creating these cosmological forces is completely bullshit, or the void isn't the original cosmological force that was created by the first ones. That would be my final answer on that, for now, until I get sidetracked again and come up with a whole new theory of, of what explains the madness of, of the void and World of Warcraft. Um, or if I hit you up in three or eight, three weeks with another like 30 minute theory. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. If you, if you come up with another reason to make me doubt all of my theories, uh, then I'll change my mind again. <laughs> yeah. I'm already working on cooking one up for, you know, the outside force because I, it's just like 1% of me that's like blizzard. It it doesn't feel like Blizzard will, you know, put it all on the void if there, you know, there is an outside force. I feel like I'm going to I'm going to rack my brain come back with you when I figure out what a seventh force could look like. So All right. Yeah, I'm 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 game. I'm very yeah. much game. I don't want to step on, you know, overstay my welcome. I've gotten DMs, so you know. <laughs> all right. Cool stuff, know. man. You have a wonderful uh, rest of your stream. And, will yeah. Thank you very much for the question, Drexler. I really appreciate mm -hmm. it. Uh, have a good night, man. All right. You too. Peace out, bro.